Hey there once again YouTube, my name is Ben Ferriolo. It's been a few days, but I am back once again. We're going to talk about some recent activity today at Yellowstone and some other locations. Um, if you haven't already, please check out my website and link is in the description box below, right under my email address. It's www.monitorsize.net. And by the way, I'm going to do a radio interview on Friday at 10.30 a.m. Pacific time with 95.5 My Country radio station in Wyoming. Apparently a lot of people in that area are, um, they, they, they like to monitor Yellowstone. So they, they look at my work sometimes and they decide to do a radio interview. I chose to do the pre-recorded interview, so we'll record it on Friday at 10.30 a.m. And then I believe the next day, either Saturday or on Monday, the a few days after that, they'll put it on the radio. And I'll also be able to upload it on my YouTube channel, so just keep an eye out for that. That'll be coming soon. And don't again, don't forget to check out my website. The link is in the description box below, right under my email address, monitorsize.net. All right, here we are at Yellowstone. Let's start with Yellowstone first, because Yellowstone's my passion. First off, Steamboat Geyser did erupt today. I have not updated my page yet, but I believe this is the... Let's see, let's see, what was the last one? Let's go to Steamboat Geyser 2019 on my web page. Under the Seismic Events menu, by event. If it'll go... Give me a second, guys. Sorry, my computer's very slow today. Very, very slow. There we go. Okay. The last eruption was the 22nd eruption. Okay, so today is the 23rd eruption in 2019, which would be the 55th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. And that would be this eruption here. It showed up quite strong on YNR. Now that the ground is not frozen, the surface vibrations from steamboat eruptions can reach YNR now. Which, I believe that is why, uh, during the winter season, we did not really see any steamboat eruptions on YNR. YNM, of course, as usual, always shows steamboat eruptions. I have not, again, I have not updated my Steamboat Geyser page. But by the time this video is uploaded to YouTube, it probably will be updated. So just keep an eye out for that. Really don't know what is going on with my internet today. It's been acting very, very slow. But here you can see the steamboat eruption on Seismic Station YNM. YNM resides within the Norris Museum at Norris at Yellowstone. Let's go to YLT real quick, shall we? We see we did have a few earthquakes right here. I do not think it can be considered a rapid fire swarm. It, it, it was kind of energetic, but I'm not going to label this a rapid fire swarm. Down here, though, there was a little teeny, teeny, tiny rapid fire swarm. Now, this, the first swarm that occurred earlier, let's see, what time did this occur? Mountain time, this occurred around midnight. Around midnight mountain time, so around 6 UTC, June 19th. And it occurred right down in this location right here. I'll show you the exact location of that because they have reported some of the earthquakes from that swarm. But the second minor swarm, which I believe is a rapid fire swarm, occurred at YTP first. So we have two locations showing a slight increase in seismicity at Yellowstone. Let's go to the earthquake map, shall we? Now they are reporting, what is that, six. Six earthquakes as part of this earthquake swarm. Remember, they do not report every earthquake. So I'm going to make an analysis page for both the minor swarms at Yellowstone today. And it will be, let's go to my seismic events drop down menu on my website by location. Go to Yellowstone Super Volcano. This is where I post a lot of my uh, analysis pages, just showing a lot of plots to the earthquake swarms that occur there at Yellowstone, especially the rapid fire swarms. I will be posting that on this page probably tonight or tomorrow morning, but just keep an eye out for that. Let's click on June 12th. So on June 12th, which was about a week ago, we did see a rapid fire swarm south of West Thumb Lake. Today's swarm cannot be characterized as a rapid fire swarm, at least the one in this location. It almost can be, but it almost doesn't fit the bill. Let's scroll down. Let's scroll down. Notice the swarm area along this fault line right here. I believe this is the Mount Sheridan fault system. Notice how on June 12th, the earthquakes were linear. Notice how they were parallel to the fault system right down here. And there's a little bit of seismicity to the right, right over here. Now take a look at today. Notice we see the same exact formation. Notice that? We see earthquakes occurring right along the, let's see, let's see, East Mount Sheridan fault system. Right here, same direction too, parallel to the fault. And then we see a little bit of seismicity to the right. They were reporting one earthquake, but I bet a few more did occur in that location. Very, very intriguing, guys. Notice how the activity seems to be almost exactly the same as the June 12th, 2019 earthquake swarm. So I believe this is a continuation of the June 12th swarm. Uh, that's what I believe. 
Again, they are not reporting any earthquakes as part of the very minor rapid fire swarm near station YTP. I believe the swarm occurred, the really minor swarm, I mean, there were probably only like 10 max in that swarm, but I'll take a look at that later. It occurred right in this location, I believe. It's hard to tell right now. I haven't taken a great look at the PNS wave arrivals, but it's definitely somewhere in this location. So we have two locations that have seen an increase in seismicity as of late. So why don't we go take a look at the two recent minor swarms, a Yellowstone and the Steamboat Geyser eruption in the Seismic Program Swarm. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with the most recent data stream as of 11.42 a.m. Pacific Time, June 19, 2019 from Borehole 944 in the PB Network Short Period Vertical. No location code. Now you may be wondering, huh, Ben, I thought that they were offline. Notice Borehole 944. It looks like it's offline, doesn't it? Well... This is a server issue. This is why you should not only rely on the heli quarters, or excuse me, the web quarters on isthesingon.org or the University of Utah website. Do not just rely on them. You need to actually download seismic data. And notice, here we are right here. We have the data. Now we're going to take a look at the June 19th West, uh, or excuse me, East Mount Sheridan Fault System Earthquake Swarm, which is a continuation of the earthquake swarm that occurred on June 12th, 2019. Going to spectrogram. Okay, let's see if there are any low frequency earthquakes. Not seeing much. I guess this kind of can be characterized as a rapid fire swarm in some parts of the swarm. I don't know. It, it, it's iffy. It's very iffy. Right here, you could tell there are multiple, multiple events occurring in a very short time period of, of about, I'm going to say, less than two minutes. Multiple events, maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just approximately eight right there in about less than two minutes. So that would be considered rapid fire swarm, but some of these do occur singularly, if you know what I mean. Going forward, here's a few more earthquakes right here. I believe the largest earthquake of the swarm being reported is a magnitude 1.8. Let's see here, shall we? Magnitude 1.8 at 6.8 kilometers in depth. So it's not super shallow. It's somewhat deep occurring along the fault system. I don't know why this would be occurring. It's a little bit too early to tell if uplift is starting again around this location. Maybe. It may not be. I don't know. But as uplift starts again, we should see an increase in seismicity, as we have before. And that's the end of that swarm right there. Then we see three events right there. No low-frequency events, which is a good sign. I always look out for low-frequency earthquakes. Because low-frequency earthquakes can be caused by degassing of the magma, or even magma itself. Or even a small little rupture opening, sometimes uh, openings of fault systems slowly, kind of like a uh, kind of like how low frequency events can sometimes be seen during slow slip events. Sometimes, um, let's say a dike is opening, right? As that dike starts to expand and starts to rupture, sometimes low frequency earthquakes start to take it just from it opening, not just from the gas being released from the magma or the magmatic fluids, but from the fracture opening. But we don't see any of that here at all. Again, I'm going to do an analysis page tonight about this earthquake swarm and the following earthquake swarm as well, which we can see right down here. It looks very small, doesn't it? Well, that's because it occurred closest to Seismic Station YTP. So why don't we pull up that station right now? Here we have Seismic Station YTP in the WY network. 01 location code, short period vertical. You can see the earthquake swarm along the East Sher East, uh, excuse me, the East Mount Sheridan fault system. You can see multiple of those quakes right here did register all the way to YTP. Many stations around Yellowstone National Park did detect this event. But right here we see an actual rapid fire swarm occurring right here. I believe it's a rapid fire swarm. I don't know. Let's check it out. Yeah, it's got some good energy. Somewhat. Some very, very tiny though. Look at that. It's just barely can be considered a rapid fire swarm. Barely. Very, very teeny tiny. The largest one would be this one right here. I'm guessing maybe going up to 6,000 amplitude count. I'm going to say maybe a 1.0, 1.0 to 1.2. Don't know for sure. See a downwards going P wave, which I believe shows dilatation. Still ex haven't exactly learned what that means. Again, I am ta starting to take courses for online, uh, online courses for earthquake seismology and volcanology. And it's interesting because the volcanology course that I did join, one of the instructors on there, is Michael Poland from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. So I thought that was pretty cool. And we see three earthquakes right there. Not really seeing much else. That's pretty much it. 
But as we go down and go down and go down, we notice there is some type of activity in the lower frequency band that we did not see up here much at all. We did see it a little bit. Don't know what this is, though. I am unsure. That looks very interesting, guys. Possibly low frequency tremor, or are these lake microseisms? Could be lake microseisms because Yellowstone Lake is so large. Microseisms from the lakes have been detected many, many times. They even did a research paper on it. I don't know, though. I don't know. That's very, very interesting. Huh. We'll just have to keep an eye on that right there. So that's it for the Yellowstone earthquake swarms. Now let's take, get, take a look at Seismic Station YNM in the Norris Museum and take a look at the most recent steamboat eruption. Here we have the data from Seismic Station YNM at the Norris Museum. WY network code, 01 location code, broadband vertical. But we don't need a frequency filter right this second, even though I usually do frequency filters for broadband channels. This steamboat eruption, I believe, was the... I have to check again. I'm sorry, guys. I believe it's the 23rd... Yes, I actually, never mind. I believe it is the 23rd steamboat eruption of 2019. Let me just double check just to make sure. Still haven't updated my page yet, but it probably will be updated by the time this video is up. Yeah, today's eruption, or last night's eruption, was the 23rd eruption of 2019, which would be the 55th eruption since it reactivated in early 2018. We see the eruption clear as day right here in Seismic Station YNM. I'm going to say it peaked at about, we got a little line going up to almost 40,000 amplitude count, but that's just one little tiny line. So I'm going to say the majority of the eruption lasted all the way to about 20,000 amplitude count. So that is somewhat smaller in regards to amplitude than some of the other eruptions that have been occurring this year, but looks like Steamboat is still alive and well. The last one occurred about four days ago, so... Very interesting. This steamboat eruption started at about 8.20 UTC, which last night, that would be about, doo -doo 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 -doo, let's see, Pacific time. That would be 1.20 a.m. Pacific time, but in mountain time, that'd be 2.20 a.m., which is, I believe, an hour or two after that earthquake swarm just south of West Thumb Lake. Very, very interesting, guys. Let's check out the spectrogram. Typical high range frequencies. Remember, with steamboat eruptions, we rarely, rarely ever see any lower frequencies at all. Check out the spectra plot just real quick. Oh yeah, dominant frequencies between 23 hertz and 37 hertz. So, that's it for Yellowstone right now. Let's move on to something else. Here we are back at earthquake.usgs.gov. For the past seven days of all magnitudes, we are north of New Zealand. You see, New Zealand is right down here. We have the Kermadec Trench and the Kermadec Islands, which belong to New Zealand as well. We have seen a lot of seismicity in this location, guys. Now, at first, remember the magnitude 7.2 hit. Now, we had a few quakes prior to that, possibly four shocks to the magnitude 7.2. Uh, but the 7.2 at 34.4 kilometers in depth a few days ago on the 15th was quite strong. I thought that was it. I was wrong. Multiple aftershocks, at least that's what I thought. Then we got a 6.3. No, notice that? And then keep going, keep going. Multiple fours, multiple fives, and we had a 6.0. Keep going, keep going, we had a 5.4, keep going, keep going, keep going, and then recently we had a magnitude 6.4, so it is very interesting seeing how seismicity is occurring here. These, of course, still could be aftershocks to the magnitude 7.2, but just in case, why don't we take a look at historical seismicity for this location and see how long it's been since we've seen a major rupture of this subduction zone in this area right here. So, since 1900, since the year 1900, this area right here, this is magnitude 7.9 and above. This area has never seen a magnitude 9 at all. So we have magnitude 7.9 and above, and we only see an 8.2 at supposedly 15 kilometers in depth in 1917. And then in 1976, we saw magnitude 8.0 at 33 kilometers in depth, very similar basically the same location and the same depth as the magnitude 7.2 a few days ago. So it's been a while since we've seen an actual large earthquake. I know a 7.2 is quite large, but this area is capable of very, very large earthquakes, guys. That's pretty much it for right now. Um, we got a little bit of seismicity in Texas, and there have been a few earthquakes past few days. Not shown right now because it was a few days ago, but up near Canada right here. Also, I believe a few more aftershocks uh, from the Ohio earthquake have been occurring in that area right there, but not too, too much else. We had a tiny earthquake up here, somewhat near where I live, at magnitude 0.4 at 18.7 kilometers in depth. 
Yeah, not seeing too, 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 too much, but... Oh, and then we have an explosion, which is likely... I already looked at it. It's, it's right at the quarry in that area, so... You can go look at it for yourself if you wish. That's pretty much it, guys. Let's check out the, just real quick, the PNSN Tremor map. See if ETS Tremor has calmed down or if it is increasing. Just real quick. Remember, Episodic Tremor and Slip, ETS, is... It occurs when the subduction zone starts to slip more than usual. And Tremor is detected by seismic stations and Slip is detected by GPS stations. Zooming in. We remember we saw the peak between April and May. Remember that? And it's starting to die down. So I believe that was indeed the ETS event that we were looking for. It was a little bit early, but you know, that does sometimes happen. Let's go back to all data. You can see some, it's, you know, they say it occurs every 14 months. But looking at the pattern, it does not seem like that's true sometimes. Sometimes it seems like it occurs early. Sometimes it seems like it occurs twice in one year. Like, look at this right here. That looks like it occurred twice in one year. That's very, very interesting. So, really, there is no set schedule to ETS. The same cannot be said for Steamboat. Actually, wait, Steamboat is now erupting erratically, so never mind. So, who knows what's going on, guys. I hope you all have a great day. God bless, and I'll see you later.